Hi guys, it's Mr. Shirelli, and what I want to do is uh, give you a rough idea how to do the car race assignment. Just give you a few more hints. Hopefully uh, you'll have a, a good idea what you want to do. Now, if you look at the screen here, I've got two picture boxes. All right, The example that we did in class called Flipbook had one. So what you would do next is obviously make another picture box, give it a name. I called it Pick New Player. All right, And then let's take a look at the code. Now, in your game, if you use two completely different images, you're going to have to have another array. I'm going to cheat here because I don't want to do the extra work, and I'm just going to still stick with my one array. I'm going to use that for both people that are racing across the screen. You would make a totally different array here with seven, eight, whatever number of characters you're going to have in your image. Uh, the counter would be different also if you had two different uh, arrays. One might start at one, one might start at something else. Okay, but again, use a different variable there. When you loaded in your images, there would be two loops here, not one. One for the first picture and one for the second. Now look at these lines here. This would load the first picture of the first set of pictures into the player number one. This, because I'm getting lazy, I'm just taking the same image array and feeding the first picture into this player. Okay, so that's the second person on the screen. So you would have a different name there. Then you would resize them here, and you're ready to go. Now in the timer, because now you have two people, this is, takes care of the dancing person for the first one. This is the guy dribbling the basketball. The second one here, notice what I did, is called pick new player. Basically the same thing, because I had the same number of images, right? But let's see what happens when you run this. So, so far we've got these two guys drilling the basketball. They're standing still. They're not doing anything. When I press start, I want them to race. That's where this part comes in. Down at the bottom, in the second timer, we did this a little bit at the end of yesterday's class. I'm going to pick a random number for the first player. All right? And that's how much that person is going to play, uh, move. This part in here, when you do your game, you're not going to need in terms of uh, the direction stuff. Okay, now I'm going to sort of cheat here. I'm going to get lazy and copy all of this, and I'm going to basically use the same commands again. Okay, now this will comment out for a second because we don't know when we're going to finish the game. But let's take a look at the second one. Pick another random number, but remember it's pick new player. All right, and again, this part in here, I'll comment out for a second. But let's see if this actually gets the guys to go across the screen. Okay, so when I press start, there they go. Looks like the top guy's winning by a little bit in a second. Okay, so let's do it again. All right, so that's the basic game. Let's do it again. All right, so we start. We're picking random numbers. The top guy looks like he's winning, definitely winning, and he definitely won. Now, how do you figure out who won? All right, you have to do something like what I've got written up here. If this player's greater than the width, then he wins. Else if this player is greater than the width, he wins. Else if, I guess, could they both tie? They could, all right? I'm not going to give you that part of the solution. You're going to have to try to figure that out yourself. But basically what's going to happen is the instant one of these two players wins, I want you to have like a message box or something that says player one wins. And also you're going to have to shut down the timers because if you don't, it's still going to go crazy on you. So once one player reaches the end or the other or it's a tie, you're going to say you won and also turn off the timers. Now you can turn off just the timer that's making them move, which is this one right here, or you can turn them both off. If you don't turn off this timer, when the guy gets to the end and he wins, they're still going to be drumming the basketball. So it's totally up to you. But what you need to do is make sure you turn off the timers. Now other things that you can do if you want to make it more complicated and kind of neat, you can have like a little thing where it's red, yellow, and green, and then when it turns green, it starts. So then you don't use a button. Okay, then you've got to figure out with a, set, a third timer when this timer is finished to kickstart the other timers. But anyway, that hopefully is some more hints on how you can make your game.